You're watching Sun News Network. The CBC has hired Gilles de Sepp. In other words, Canadian taxpayers are giving that separatist two pensions. That's tonight on The Source. Gilles Decep used to be a Marxist activist. Seriously, he was a communist. Then he made the easy transition into being a Quebec separatist. But then Decep made the best decision of his life. He decided to become a Canadian member of parliament. In 1990, he ran for parliament and he won. At last, his Marxist separatist revolution was near. And in 1995, Decep and his fellow separatists had their big chance. Quebec actually had a province-wide referendum on separating. Ah, but alas, the people of Quebec were not ready to join Duceppe's revolution. So what did Duceppe do? Did he leave Ottawa? Hell no! He stayed on, working for the man, or actually for the woman, Queen Elizabeth, to be precise. Of course, Duceppe had to swear allegiance to the Queen when he became an MP to get the job, but the next month he actually had a public renunciation claiming he didn't mean it. <laughs> but he sure didn't mind collecting his handsome paycheck even though Her Majesty's image graces all of our money. Now, Duceppe got a little bit comfy, and so the revolution, I mean, just look at that word revolution, it sounds so kinetic, so speedy. Well, that re revolution became permanent. Sure, Quebec wasn't about to go anywhere, but neither was Duceppe. Days turned into months, turned into years, and by 2011, some 21 years after being elected, Duceppe was still happy to plod along, swearing by hook or by crook he was going to leave this dump of a country uh, any moment now. Of course, in the end, it was Quebecers who voted to separate themselves from Duceppe and the bloc, devastating that party down to a rump of just four MPs in this May's election. And Duceppe wasn't one of those four. Four MPs? That's smaller than the new kids on the block, you know? I mean, there's five of them. But don't you worry about Gilles. He's well taken care of. As, now, as the leader of the bloc in Parliament, Duceppe was earning a cool 211000 bucks a year. And that doesn't even count his office budget, his travel allowance, his staff, and all the other perks that go along with being a part of the Ottawa elite. Now, Duceppe is gone from Ottawa, but his pension isn't. According to the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, Duceppe will receive $141,000 a year for the rest of his life courtesy of the Canadian taxpayer. If he lives to be an average age, he'll pocket $2.9 million more in the years ahead. Look, there's something offensive to me about a separatist living off the avails of Canadian taxpayers. There's something odious about a party that hates Canada but loves to wring out all of its benefits, security, comfort, and lots and lots of dough. But at the end of the day, I believe in freedom, freedom of speech, political freedom, democratic freedom, and Gilles de Sepp and the Bloc Québécois were a peaceful expression of Quebec's political will. It would have been un-Canadian to ban them or not permit them to vote for whomever they wanted to vote. It's unthinkable that we would have banned the Bloc or separatists. I mean, look, in the end, they petered out on their own, a far more powerful advertisement of their impotence than if Canada had tried to ban them or something, which would have actually been proof of their power. But what do we do now? Now that the great experiment with the Bloc Québécois in Ottawa is over, what happens next? What now for Duceppe? Okay, I, I know there are almost as many separatists in Ottawa now in the NDP as there were before in the Bloc, but at least they're a little bit embarrassed about it in the NDP. But what about Duceppe? Would he fade away into obscurity now? Should he move to France or, I don't know, maybe to Cuba? No, no, no. He's moving in with the CBC. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation has hired him. Seriously. I mean, it was one thing when Duceppe was a politician, a newsmaker. Of course the CBC had to interview Duceppe and report on his news. But he's not a newsmaker now. His lifelong cause, the party that was his, has been devastated. This is where he's supposed to retire. But the CBC, Canada's government broadcaster, has paid him to join their on-air team. Again, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Duceppe should be banned from anything. I believe in freedom of the press, but for Canada's state broadcaster hoovering up 1.1 billion tax dollars a year from Canadian taxpayers to 
have to give Duceppe a golden parachute, a uh, feather soft pillow landing after his ignominious defeat. Well, that's a disgrace that only the CBC bureaucrats could cook up. How much is the CBC paying Duceppe, do you think? Well, we asked the CBC. Naturally, they refuse to disclose it. They keep a lot of secrets over there at the CBC. The only thing that's not a secret is that they feel entitled to your tax dollars. Oh, no point in sending in an access to information request to find out. The CBC routinely ignores that law and has been condemned by the courts as a scoff law. But just keep their cash coming, okay? I mean, if any other media outlet had hired Giuseppe, if the Sun News Network had, well, that's their private money, that's that private media outlet's private business, that's fine. But for the government broadcaster, gorged with taxpayers' money, to cut a secret deal with that separatist is a different matter altogether than if it were a private company. If Duceppe got a private job in the private sector, that's private business. That business's customers could express their delight or their dissatisfaction, but it wouldn't be a public policy issue. But when the government broadcaster decides to enrich a separatist with a public appointment, that's our business. Just as if it would have been if the government had appointed Decept to, I don't know, an ambassadorship position. Look, here is the boss of the CBC. Take a look at this. Heritage Minister James Moore bragging about how awesome the CBC is and how we just have to keep gorging it on our tax dollars. Look at this. It's a key institution for uniting the country, and that's why we have increased funding for the CBC. A key institution for unifying, for uniting the country. U key institution for uniting the country hires a separatist. <laughs> New. The CBC thinks hiring Duceppe is uh, what we pay them $1.1 billion for, apparently. Now, what can you do about this? Sorry, not a damn thing. James Moore, the CBC's defender, in the Conservative government has taken CBC funding to record heights. Look at him boast about that. Check it out. Here's what's going on from our side. We made a campaign commitment that we would maintain or increase funding for the CBC. We've increased funding for the CBC in every single one of our budgets at a time of deficits and recessions globally and across the country. I love you. I love you too. I love you more. I love you mostest. I mean, look, did you see the tongue bath going on on the CBC? He's shoveling the dough over there, and they're hiring separatists, and it's your dough. And even though Moore has promised that he would answer questions about his Frankenstein monster on this show, look at this, look at this one. I'm, I'm glad to come on any time and talk about the CBC. The CBC. Oh, ho, 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 he has not kept that promise. James Moore is hiding from accountability, so what can you do? James Moore's going to take your $1.1 billion during this era of government deficits, and give it to the CBC to help pay for Duceppe's fat honorarium check, a secret check that we are not permitted to know about. Look, don't waste your money writing to James Moore. I've asked you to write to him before. Don't waste your time. He'll throw your emails in the garbage can, along with his promise to appear on the show to answer for the CBC. Do something that might have a chance of success. Send your emails to the Prime Minister himself. The Prime Minister's email is easy to remember. It's pm at pm.gc.ca. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something more. I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to raise a ruckus. And next Tuesday, next Tuesday, I'm going to host a very special hour-long show all about privatizing the CBC. You do not want to miss it. Write it down in your calendar. Tuesday, August 23rd at 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll run it again at 10 p.m. Eastern. That's the right answer. Not censorship. I don't want to censor anybody. I don't want to censor the CBC or Gilles Deceptive. I don't want to fire anybody. The opposite. I want to set the CBC free. Free from government. And even free from accountability to taxpayers. If we privatize the CBC, it can make whatever boneheaded decisions it wants. Because it'll be using its own money, not ours. Gilles Deceptive wants to separate from Canada. Fine. I want to separate from the CBC. Let's see if my separatist campaign is a little more successful than his.